My dear children of God, greetings and peace be unto you. I welcome you to today's episode of the Liturgy of the Word with Father Evaristus Egemeyo Abu. Today is Thursday, the 15th day of February 2024. It is Thursday after Ash Wednesday. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father in heaven, as we study your word, we beg you to grant us the grace to understand what we read, to believe what we understand, and to practice what we preach. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading today is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30, verses 15 to 20. A responsorial psalm comes from Psalm 1, verses 1 to 4 and verse 6, while our gospel passage is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 9, verses 22 to 25. First reading, a reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, See, I have set before you life and good, death and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his ordinances, then you shall live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away and you will not hear, but are drawn away to the worship of other gods and serve them, I declare to you this day that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land which you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, Choose life that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice, and clinging to him, for that means life to you and length of days, that you may dwell in the land which the Lord saw to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob to give them. The Word of the Lord Thanks be to God. Blessed the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. Blessed the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. Blessed indeed is the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the path with sinners, nor abides in the company of scorners, but whose delight is the law of the Lord, and who ponders his law day and night. Blessed the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. It's like a tree that is planted beside the flowing waters that yields its fruit in due season, and all that it does shall prosper. Blessed the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. Not so are the wicked, not so. For they like we not chaff shall be driven away by the wind, for the Lord knows the way of the just, but the way of the wicked will perish. Blessed the man who has placed his trust in the Lord. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Repent, says the Lord. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For thy kingdom of heaven is at hand. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, The Son of Man must suffer many things 
and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And he said to all, If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever will save his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake, he will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus, honor to Mary and Joseph. In the book of Deuteronomy, where our first reading today comes from, Moses tells us that God has set life, that is good, and death, that is evil, before us. It's up to us to choose. We have blessings and curses. We have good things and bad things. It is up to us to choose. The God who made you without your cooperation will not save you without your cooperation. None of us chose to be born. None of us asked to come to this life. But now that we are here, we must take full responsibility for our lives. We must realize that there is a blessing for every choice that we make. There is also something that we have to sacrifice for choices that we make. As much as we desire certain things in life, we must be willing to pay the price. If you want heaven, if you want the blessings of God, we also must be willing to follow the commandment of God. We must be willing to walk in the path that he has traced before us. That is the sacrifice that we have to make in order to enjoy the blessings that come with the commandments. We cannot ignore the sacrifices and still enjoy the blessings. We cannot eat our cake and have it. We always have a choice, either to walk as children of God or to walk as children of the devil. God will never force his way on us. It will always be up to us to decide what becomes of us through our daily choices. We are free to choose but not to avoid the consequences of our choices. In other words, we are free to make choices, but we are not free to decide whether or not we shall enjoy or suffer the consequences of our choices. In today's gospel passage, Jesus sends out an open invitation to us. If any man would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake, he will save it. Note that Jesus began with the word if, meaning once again that no one is forced to follow Jesus. Just as Moses is saying in our first reading today that the choice is up to us, Jesus is also saying in our gospel passage that the choice is up to us. If we choose to take up our crosses, then we shall enjoy a greater reward. If we choose to sacrifice, if we choose to walk as God's children in a world that has so much fallen in love with darkness, in a world of immorality, so in this kind of world, carrying a cross means following what God has said, treating your body as God's temple, regardless of what the society is saying. In a world as dark as ours, carrying a cross entails that you do not steal, that you do not collect bribe, or that... You are not part of collective evil that has become so normalized today. 
Jesus Christ says, if you do this, if you take up your cross, then even though you're going to suffer some consequences, people will hate you for saying the truth. You may be hungry. You may not have food to eat because you choose not to steal, even when you have opportunity to steal. And so, and so on. Whatever you have to suffer just for being a righteous Christian, Jesus is saying that you have a great reward awaiting you in heaven. No one is forced to follow Jesus. It is a decision that has to come from your heart, a choice to deny yourself, to take up your cross every day, and to follow behind Jesus. If we choose not to follow our Lenten observances, we are not committing a sin. It's a choice. It's a choice. When I mean Lenten observances now, I'm referring to fasting, stations of the cross, giving of alms, prayer. These exercises have been uh, given to us during this season of Lent in order to deepen our spiritual life, in order to draw us away from worldliness and closer to God. It is not that after these 40 days, we may now return back to our old ways of doing things. No, these practices should help us make complete change such that these practices will continue. We will still be closer to God, even if we don't do the stations of the cross, but we will still be close to God for, for, for the rest of our lives. They are there for our good. If we understand their benefits, we would willingly take advantage of them. However, if we choose not to follow them, if we choose not to take up our cross, God still remains a loving Father. Nevertheless, the best choice for us this season of Lent is self-denial. We are called to fast, to deny ourselves from pleasure. We are called to pray, to deny ourselves from pride. We are called to give alms, to deny ourselves from greed and selfishness. We live in a world where no one wants to hear about self-denial. Everyone seeks the easy path, the path of pleasure and comfort. But Jesus Christ tells us, enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide. And the way is easy that leads to destruction. And those who enter by it are many. A lot of us practice convenient Christianity. We are close to God only to the extent that it doesn't disturb us from, you know, catching the pleasures and the funds of life. As long as there is anything that will require us to make an extra sacrifice, we run away from it. A lot of us hate the season of Lent. We hate having to go to church instead of every Sunday, but at least Sundays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We hate it. <laughs> we hate it. It's simply because we are on the wide road. We have not yet chosen to enter by the narrow way. For that narrow gate, is hard. It requires a lot of sacrifices on our path. Just as a very beautiful car is more expensive than one that is old and rickety and perhaps may not give you as much comfort and luxury as you would desire. When we enter by the narrow way, we are making more sacrifices for God because we know that there is a greater reward awaiting us in heaven. Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 to 14. May God bless his words in our hearts. May God give us the grace to remain fervent all through this season of Lent and never to return to our old ways. The Lord be with you and with your spirit, and may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you both now and forever. Amen.